I was walking home from the mall on Valentine's Day, feeling pretty good about my day of shopping and indulging in some much needed me time. The sun was starting to set and the sky was a beautiful shade of pink and orange, so I decided to take the long way home to enjoy the peacefulness of the quiet streets and the beauty of the sky above me. I was 25 and excited to be starting a new job at the coffee shop next to my apartment. I had finally moved out of my parents' house and was beginning to feel like my life was going in the direction I wanted it to. I was listening to music through my earbuds but had this nerve-wracking feeling that something was just off. It's like I could feel someone watching me. Almost like an invisible set of eyes were just locked directly to my every move. My heart began to race and my breathing became shallow as I quickened my pace and I was desperate just to get home. I looked over my shoulder and, of course, there he was. My ex. The one who couldn't get over me and just wouldn't leave me alone. After we broke up almost a year before this, he did everything he could to convince me to take him back. At first it was normal stuff like having flowers sent to my home or mailing me sweet letters in the mail. It was romantic and nice and kind of innocent even, but I didn't want to get back together with him so I never responded to any of it. At this point I hadn't seen or heard from him for a couple of months and I thought that he had finally gotten the hint that it was over between us, but apparently not. He was walking about ten feet behind me and when I looked back at him, I could see this sort of sinister look in his eyes. He had always been a bit creepy, but this was some next level stuff. He didn't say a word. He just sort of smiled this horribly disturbing smile. I tried to ignore him and keep walking, but he started following me more closely, getting closer and closer with each step. I turned a corner, hoping to lose him, but he was still there. And every step that I took, he took the same one only five feet behind me. I started to feel my panic set in. I'd always felt safe walking home alone, but now I felt like I was being hunted or stalked like someone's prey. I pulled out my phone, calling a friend, but she didn't answer. I tried calling my roommate, but still no answer. I was completely alone with no one to help me. I had called the police on him many times before, and the last time they just straight up told me not to call again about him unless it was a life or death situation, and I really didn't want to hear about that again. So I started to run hoping to get to my apartment building before he caught up with me. I could hear him getting closer and closer with every step, and so close that I could even hear his heavy breathing. I was gasping for air and my heart was pounding in my chest, but I knew that I had to keep running. I finally made it to my building and ran inside, but he caught the door and followed me in. I could hear his footsteps echoing down the hall as I ran to my apartment and locked the door behind me once I was safely inside. I was okay. I wanted to scream and cry at the same time, but it wasn't over yet. I tried to calm myself down, but my mind was just racing. I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to call the police, I didn't want to make a scene, and I didn't want to draw attention to myself. I just wanted it all to be over. I wanted my ex to be one of those guys that just moves on when a relationship ends. My roommate found me curled up in a ball in front of the door and asked me what happened. Through tears and hyperventilation, I told her everything. She was horrified and told me that she didn't care what they said the last time that I had called and that she was calling the police, because being chased home by your psycho stalker ex is in fact life or death. Just as she got a hold of the dispatcher, we heard a noise outside the door. I froze, my heart racing. My roommate and I stared at each other with wide eyes, waiting, listening for any noise coming from outside my door. Was he trying to get inside? I grabbed a knife from the kitchen just in case. The noise stopped and I started to relax a little. My roommate was explaining everything to the dispatcher when suddenly it started again. This time it was louder. It was a loud banging noise but the banging wasn't coming from the door. It was almost like he was stomping around outside the door having a tantrum that he wasn't able to get inside. I'd never experienced that side of him and I never knew that he was capable of doing something like this. Throughout our whole relationship, he seemed so normal. The reason we broke up was because he had cheated, and I felt like if he was willing to risk our whole relationship for one night with a random woman, then our relationship didn't mean much to him to begin with. You'd think that he would have been able to move on by the time this all happened. I crept up to the door, knife in hand, and peered through the peephole. I couldn't see anyone, but I could hear someone breathing. 
It sounded like his mouth was pressed against the door like he wanted to hear it. I started to panic again, but my roommate tried her best to calm me down. The police told us to stay inside and keep the door locked until they arrived. They said it would only take around 10 minutes for them to get there. We sat on the floor and waited for the police. All the while, I could hear him still breathing on the other side of the door, and I knew that all he wanted was to get inside and do God knows what to me. Finally, the police got there, and they arrested my ex. He didn't put up a fight and went with them willingly. They took him away, and I was finally able to sort of breathe a sigh of relief, but unfortunately, the sort of fear and panic would stay with me for quite a long time. No matter how much I wanted to or how convenient it would be, I could never get myself to walk home alone again. I never forgot the feeling of being followed and hunted by someone who had supposedly loved me before. I was lucky to make it out alive, but the thought of what could have happened is something I still think about almost every day. I never thought that someone I once loved could turn into a monster. It's important to always trust your instincts. I learned that the hard way and I hope that my story can serve as a warning to others. It serves as a reminder that sometimes love can just turn into an obsession and that obsession can turn into something much more dangerous. I was so excited to start a new life in the city. My girlfriend and I had just moved into a small apartment and I was eager to explore a place that I'd never been before. I had gone to the grocery store to pick up a few things and as I was walking home I was texting my girlfriend about all the cool things I came across on the walk and all the fun stuff that there was for us to do together around the city. I was so preoccupied with my phone that I didn't even realize that I would gotten turned around. I don't know how I was stupid enough to not look where I was going, but I was just really excited to tell her about my day and everything I saw. After a while, I finally looked up and realized that I had no idea where I was. The streets were empty and the buildings appeared to look abandoned with their doors and windows boarded up. It kind of looked like something out of an apocalyptic video game, The Last of Us. I was starting to feel uneasy and honestly a little scared. This looked like nothing of the area that I was just walking in not too long ago. I looked at my phone's map and started making my way back in the right direction. I was around four miles from home still and it was getting dark. As I was walking I saw an old car with a taxi sign on top. It was starting to rain and the darkness was engulfing the streets around me, but I still hesitated for a second before getting in. It didn't look like an official taxi and I'd seen way too many true crime shows to trust it, but I just wanted to get home and the thought of being lost in this unfamiliar place was freaking me out way more than getting in the car. I knocked on the window and the driver rolled it down just a little crack and it was enough for me to ask if he was able to take me where I needed to go. He didn't speak just nodded a yes in my direction. He unlocked the doors and I got in and told him to drop me off at the gas station near my apartment building and I gave him the address. The driver started the engine and we were off. I still had my maps app open and glanced at it every so often to make sure that we were going in the right direction. Only the further we drove, I noticed that we had started going in the opposite direction of my apartment. I started to get nervous and asked the driver if he could take me home or even just let me out so I could find another ride but he didn't say a word and instead just kept driving. I started to feel panic set in as the car took me further away from my home. I demanded that the driver let me out and he just sort of chuckled to himself. I tried to open the door but it was locked and didn't have a button to unlock it. It was one of those locks where when the car is locked it retracts into the door and he can't pull it up to unlock it, and I was trapped. I started to feel a cold sweat on my skin as the fear that I was feeling began to fill every inch of my body. The driver drove for what felt like forever, taking me deeper into the outskirts of the city down its darkest, deserted streets. In reality, we probably only drove for around 30 minutes, but the panic and fear that I was feeling in that car made every second feel like hours. The rain was coming down harder and harder, and I could feel the driver's eyes on me through the rearview mirror. He was watching me closely, and it was making me even more afraid. I was trapped in that taxi with a stranger who seemed to have no intention of letting me go. The fear and desperation was overwhelming, and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't think of a way out. Eventually, the taxi pulled off to the side of the road, and the driver turned to look at me. 
He was wearing a black hoodie and his face was littered with the trashiest tattoos I'd ever seen. I almost wanted to laugh for a second and remembered where I was and decided that that wouldn't be the best idea. I could see a sort of creepy smirk on his face as he spoke to me in a harsh voice. Welcome to your final destination, he said, and I felt a chill run down my spine. I didn't know what to do. I tried to reason with the driver to just let me go and there'd be no harm done, but he wouldn't listen. He just laughed as he got out of the car and walked towards the back door. I didn't even know what to think. I had no idea what he was going to do with me. The driver opened the back door and dragged me out of the car by my jacket. He threw me into the gutter and I hit the ground hard. I was in pain but I was still alive. I tried to get up and run but he was fast and caught me, tackling me to the ground. He put a knife to my throat and I was on the verge of tears and I tried to scream but nothing came out. Why are you doing this? I asked, my voice shaking. And the driver just laughed, saying, Why not? I was terrified and I couldn't move. I could feel the cold metal of the knife against my skin. Finally, I was able to muster up a scream loud enough that somehow a group of people nearby were able to hear it. I heard footsteps coming from down the street and thank God that they were getting closer. The man told me to shut up and press the knife harder against my skin. And just when I thought things were over for me, I heard a voice calling out in the distance. Hey, what's going on here? I looked down the street and only about 50 feet away, a group of people were walking towards us. They were watching us and I realized that the driver was beginning to get nervous. His hands began to shake and he got off of me as fast as he could. He turned and ran away on foot, just leaving his car and me laying there on the street, reeling from what had just happened. The group ran towards me and one of the guys helped me up and put pressure on the wound that I didn't even notice that I had on my neck. They called the police and an ambulance took me to the hospital. I needed a few stitches for the laceration of my throat but was otherwise physically okay. The police searched the vehicle and realized that it was stolen and there was nothing in it to tie it to the person who had done that to me that night. Now years later, another man was abducted in the same manner in that area only this time, the man was caught and he was arrested. I was called in due to the correlation in the crime and was able to identify the man as the man who attacked me on that night. And thank God that he was charged and sentenced to seven years in prison. He never admitted to kidnapping anyone else, but we knew that that was probably not true. I tried my best to get over it. But the emotional scars will always be there, along with the physical one on my neck. I'm so grateful to the people who saved me. I'll never forget the fear and desperation that I felt in that taxi, but I'll also never forget the kindness and bravery of the strangers who risked their lives to help me and make sure that I was okay. From that day on, I made sure to always pay attention to my surroundings and never let my guard down again. It was back in the summer of 1974, and I was 16 years old at the time. I had just attended a concert in the city with my friends Dave and John. The three of us were catching a train home. We had got off at our stop, and we began walking home down the main road, chatting about the concert and still buzzing from the cool vibes. It was around 12 a.m., and we were crossing at a main intersection. There wasn't much traffic around this time of night. And as we crossed the road, we suddenly noticed a beat-up brown-colored station wagon stop in the middle of the intersection right near us. His window was down and the driver was around 25 to 30 years old, and although he looked a little dodgy, we just assumed he was going to ask for directions, and so we just stood there waiting to see what this guy wanted, completely unaware of the sheer terror that was about to follow. In that very moment, the guy pulled out a pistol from his lap, and what he uttered next still gives me shivers to this day. He said in a calm tone, Who wants it first? We just froze in absolute shock and terror, and it took a few seconds for all the reality of this to finally sink in. We didn't even have time to exchange a look, and we all hightailed it across the intersection. As our footsteps thundered across the road, the sound of gunshots filled the air as we ran for those bushes. I was absolutely terrified waiting for that bullet to hit me or one of my friends in the back. 
As we ran further into the park and mustered up the courage to look back, we could no longer see the car and breathed a sigh of relief. We all just stood there trying to get our breath back. Luckily, we all knew the area pretty well, and we decided to continue along the old gravel road that we knew would take us back towards our homes. As we walked down the path, our conversation was pretty minimal, as we were too preoccupied of the thoughts of what had just happened and how lucky we were. However, that feeling of relief didn't last very long. As we got near the end of the gravel road, I could make out a car at the very end, and I started to wonder to myself, could that be the guy? We kept walking, but then just like out of a scary movie, the car flipped on its headlights and started revving its engine, and under the dim lights of the street, my heart began to sink as I then realized it was the brown station wagon. We knew he could see us. He was waiting for us. Taunting us. He must know these streets well and where each of the different roads would lead. Well, we didn't waste another second. We took off once again and jumped the fence of a neighboring house. We didn't stop. We just kept running and running and jumping all of the fences. I glanced toward the road many times and I would see his car screaming past. Each time we made it to a main road, we would see his car appear again and once again speed towards us and we dove over fences and tried to find another way. This happened about two or three more times after that. Around 1.30 a.m., we got down the end of another side road, and we couldn't see at the time, but the fence we jumped was covered in barbed wire, and it tore our clothes as we slid down. I let out a few groans as it grazed my arm. We were now in some kind of paddock-type area, and we could faintly hear the screeches of his tires racing around trying to find us. We just stood there crouching in the dark, breathing heavily, standing in cow manner, but we didn't care. We probably crouched for about 15 minutes or so, just waiting in the dark. Figuring by now he must be gone, we made our way back onto the main road. We kept our eyes peeled and kept glancing over our shoulders, and as the headlights appeared in the distance on many occasions, we each stopped breathing for a second, wondering in anticipation whether or not it was going to be the brown station wagon. We didn't see him again after that, and around 3 a.m., we walked my friend John home. Dave came back to mind for a bit so we could talk more calmly about our experience. Dave went home later that night. What was only meant to be a 20-minute walk home turned into a two-hour terror trip that I will never forget. What was even more scary was a week or so later, I heard on the news that an elderly lady was shot by a random stranger one late night not too far from where this happened. Whether it was the same guy or not, I'll never know. All I really know is that my friends and I were incredibly lucky to escape that night. I live in a relatively safe area in Scotland, though I've had several really odd and scary experiences since I moved here about four years ago. I'm a short 29-year-old woman and I work in a pub, so I often get out of work quite late. I never wear my headphones when headed home at night, so this particular night was no different than usual. Alarm set, doors locked and checked, then said goodbye to my colleague and then went our separate ways to get home. I usually cross a grocery store car park to get home, and that night something struck me as odd. There were a couple of cars parked there, which is normal, but something just felt off this time. I looked over my shoulder and I clocked a guy in a hat walking a distance behind me. This wasn't weird, but I decided to keep an eye on him nonetheless. I exited the car park to the main road that I lived off of, but still had a good mile or so to go before I finally reached my flat. I checked over my shoulder again, and sure enough, the guy was walking in the same direction as me. The distance between us was starting to close, so I decided to cross the road. Looking over my shoulder, I was able to not only look for traffic coming, but I was also able to keep an eye on him. I crossed the road and didn't bother to look back for another few minutes, assuming he had stayed on the other side. But I began to hear footsteps approaching. I glanced over my shoulder and saw this guy was about 20 feet behind me. I had a soft drink in a glass bottle in my bag, and figuring I was overacting but better safe than sorry, I stuck my hand into my bag and gripped the bottle. Another 45 seconds and this guy was close enough to touch me, but he slows to my pace and then says, Hello there, how are you? I ignored him and I don't respond. I long ago gave up on pretenses of being polite if I feel uncomfortable. If I'm feeling uncomfortable, I really don't care about a stranger's feelings. But he persists in talking to me. 
Hi there, are you going to work today? No, I was being short with him. Are you going home? Yes, I said coldly. Do you live in this direction? I just looked at him, and he tried again. Do you live off this road? Where do you live? Do you live close by? I don't respond to him, and I slowed my pace, letting him walk on. I was still gripping the glass bottle, ready to hit him with it should he try anything. He tried to slow down so that I would catch up with him, but I slowed down so much that I was barely walking. He was maybe 300 yards away at this point and simply stopped and turned around, watching me and waiting for me to catch up with him. I reached into my pocket with my free hand and tried to get my phone. Of course, my phone was dead. I figured it would last the walk home, but the dodgy battery had other ideas. Surprisingly though, I wasn't really afraid. He had started walking again, but again, still quite slowly. He looked over his shoulder again after another minute, and I seized the opportunity. There was a path to a block of flats that was obscured by tall hedges, so I leaped behind them. I waited for nearly ten minutes, never letting go of that bottle the whole time. I peeked around the hedges to make sure he was there. I peeked behind bins and bus stops to make sure he wasn't hiding, but as far as I could tell, I had lost him. Maybe he didn't mean anything by this, but if you suspect a woman is afraid of you and she's walking alone at night, don't speak to her. It won't help, and especially don't ask her where she lives repeatedly. I wasn't drunk, I didn't appear to be drunk or need any help. I was just walking home like I usually would. I am, however, inclined to believe that he had bad intentions. I would rather be too cautious than not. So did that creepy dude who seemed to be following me home that night, screw off. I'm a 28 year old male, and 7 nights ago at around 10.30pm, my life changed. I was walking home from work in downtown Vancouver, British Columbia when I was randomly punched and kicked by someone walking past me. Now, I had never seen this person before. I said nothing to this person, and I wasn't in their way. In fact, I made a point of moving out of his way as he was walking fairly close to me. As I walked past him, he swung his hand out, punched me in the forehead, and went in for a punch. Being a fairly big guy with defensive training, I was able to protect myself from the second punch. After working a very long and hard shift, I didn't want to get into a fight, so I tried to flee. That's when I saw some people walking in my way and watching what was going on. I screamed for them to call the police, and that's when he started to kick me in the back. The couple didn't call, so I reached for my phone and pushed the power button about five times to activate SOS mode. The operator picked up, and when the assailant heard I was on the phone, he bounced. The police came, took my statements, and in the process, another unit arrested the guy. I've had a pretty bad headache, and I'm all bruised up. But the worst part is the mental anguish that I suffer walking in public, and even more so when I have to walk alone at night. The walk is down a very populated main road, but that doesn't ease the pain and stress. I always make sure to watch every single person now, check over my shoulders every couple of seconds, and practically jog all the way home. I feel like an idiot for even feeling this way. As a male raised in a household of competitive fighters, I was always told to never feel weak, but all I wanted to do when I got home that night was just sit in the shower and break down. Anyways, that's my story. Thank you for taking the time to listen to it and letting me vent. And for anyone else that walks home at night, please be careful. My name is Matthew, and this is the most horrifying experience I've ever had. This was something straight out of a horror movie. I lived in a rural town in California and worked at a local Domino's. I have to walk past some woods in order to get to my house. I've been working at Domino's since I was 17, and I am now 19. I have also been walking past the woods, and nothing strange has ever happened to me. Until today. So, my shift at Domino's ended at 7.30, a bit later than my normal time I get out. So I'm walking, and I could see the woods maybe a few miles up ahead. Finally, I get to the woods, and I'm on the side of the road. To get a better idea of where I was, 
Imagine a road and trees on both sides. Now, there are barely any cars or people on the road at this time. Keep in mind that it's getting dark and you only have very little light, so it really added to the creepiness. Anyway, as I was walking, I thought I could hear something coming from the trees. I looked, but I didn't see anything. I continued walking when a rock was thrown at me and landed right in front of me. I then turned around and looked to the trees and I could see someone waving at me. It was dark so I couldn't see who it was or how they looked. I asked, uh, hey, do you need something? He responded in a loud whisper and said, hey, come over here, I want to show you something. I told him that I had to get home and that I couldn't be late. He responded saying, Oh, d don't worry, it will only take a second, I really need your help with something. I told him I'll help, but I only had a minute. He said a minute is all it will take. I took a deep breath and walked over to him. He said that he found a man-made hole dug in the ground and wanted to see what was down there and that he didn't have a light. I told him I would shine my light with my iPhone down there to take a look. Doing that was the biggest mistake I've ever done. I walked over and stood by the hole with the man behind me. Before I was about to shine the light, the man pushed me down the hole. I fell about 20 feet and landed on something soft. I started cussing and screaming at the man, but I didn't see him. I stood up and I could feel the soft thing I was on. I had to see what I was standing on. I shined the flashlight on my phone and shined it down. I felt like my whole world had been shattered. The light revealed the body. It was a naked woman who looked to be about 20 and she had been killed. She had cuts everywhere on her body. I stayed down there for a good half hour before finally managing to climb out and run home. I didn't tell my parents about what I saw, I only told a few of my closest friends. My name is Courtney and I was 23 years old when this happened. I worked at a McDonald's right near my house. In order to get to my house or to my work, you have to pass by a public park. I always carry pepper spray on me in case anything happens to me. I've been working at McDonald's for a few months now and whenever I would work, I would always pass by the park and nothing has ever happened until this one night. It was a Wednesday I believe and I had just gotten off from work. It was around 11 p.m. and I was starting to walk home. The reason why I walked from work to home is because my house is close by so there's no need to drive. Anyway, while I was walking, I looked behind me for whatever reason and I saw a man in all black following me. I thought nothing of it and just simply kept walking. I looked behind me once more and this time I could tell that he was walking a bit faster. I walked faster too, hoping that this guy would go away. I felt like he could put his hand on me at any moment so I had my hand on my pepper spray just in case. And then it happened. I felt a hand cover my mouth and another hand grab my neck. I screamed and took out my pepper spray and sprayed the man at the eyes and he fell to the ground. I ran home while the man lied on the ground screaming in pain. I finally came home and went inside almost out of breath. But, unfortunately, it didn't end there. My parents weren't home and when I went to look out of my bedroom window, I saw the man across the street looking right at me. He then ran off into the darkness and I never saw him again.